Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Park Chester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. And on this, um, on this uh, show today, we will talk about uh, strokes and mental health, and also heart attacks and mental health, and what to do in case of that. And um, um, before we begin, let's uh, thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the partnerships from the Association for the, for the Blind Vermont, uh, the Division for the Blind Vermont, um, uh, Habitat for Humanity of Central Vermont, and many others. Um, and we would also like to thank um, our uh, partner in the field of uh, reporting, uh, William Jackson, reporter for the um, freelance reporter for the Harlem Times, and uh, welcome William to Able Den on Air again. Thank you, Larry. Okay, uh, can you um, be begin by? Explain what you're doing at the Harlem Times or what, what you have done for the Harlem Times, and, and we can go from there and, you know, um, based off the questions I sent you prior okay. to the show. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I should mention that I'm a former freelance reporter now, all right, but I'm working on um, getting back in there real soon. Um, what I did at the Harlem Times was I reported on stories that are um, important to urban communities in the New York City metropolitan area, okay? Mm -hmm. And also I reported on stories that involving HBCUs and, and stuff of that nature. Mm -hmm. What's an HBCU? HBCU is a historically black college or university. Okay. Speaking about college and universities, before we get to the issues at hand on strokes and heart attacks, um, what, um, what is your degree in? Um, uh, you had gotten a, a bachelor's degree in communications from Hunter College, correct? Yes. And then... You have your first master's. You already have one master's in communications from Sacred Heart University. Yes, in Fairfield, Connecticut, yes. And then now, what is your uh, second master's in and what, what are you doing? 
while my second master's degree is in creative nonfiction writing from a university called Baypad University, which is based in Long Long Meadow, Massachusetts. I'm taking online. Um, I'm taking. Uh, excuse me. I'm taking an online degree. Um, for creative nonfiction writing. Okay. So what? Um, what? What does that entail? Creative nonfiction writing entails that um, you know, you know, memoirs and literary journalism, um, nonfiction and all that stuff, sort of stuff. Basically, you're basically having to um, you it's based off of truth. You know, you know, you can't really make anything up in creative nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Explain what you mean by that. Well, um. Uh, you know, you, you you can't take liberties that you would take with um regular fish, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so let's let's get to the issues at hand. Um, you're dealing. We'll we'll start with the mental health piece, and then yes. uh, my wife will ask. Uh, then uh, Arlene will ask questions, and then uh, we'll get into other things. Uh, what? Uh, what mental health uh, issues are you dealing with and how uh, either how has that helped you in your journalism or um, can you explain a little bit about that? Well, I suffer from major depressive disorder. Okay. What, um, what is that? Can you explain? Well, um, major depressive disorder occurs where you have... Um, you know, excess um, sadness, um, you know, you feel tired most of the day, you don't want to get out of bed. Those are some of the examples. Those are some of the, those are a couple of the symptoms of, of having a major depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and um, you know, I've known you for quite a number of years, so for yes. over 20 years. Explain what you have done uh, before in the communications field. I know you worked for BronxNet Community Television. Can you explain what you did? Well, at, at BronxNet Community Television, I was a presenter assistant and intern. All right, I started in May, 2000, May 2006 and then finished in um, February 2012 to go to Sacred Heart. Um, what I did was mainly, uh, I did mainly studio work, but I did a little field work but I did mainly studio work. Um, I learned how to do camera work. I learned how to be a stage manager, learned how to do audio technical direction, which I mainly did at um, one of these um, studio shows that I was the technical director. I did um, graphics or character generators, they call it. Um, I think I mentioned audio already, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I did assistant directing for a TV show called Open, mm -hmm. which is the morning show on BronxNet. Mm -hmm. um, and I helped you out on um, special people, special issues. Yeah, the um, former show that I did at BronxNet. Yeah, the, yeah. Former, the former show you did, special people, special issues. Mm -hmm. I wrote scripts and um, I was also technical director on there. And, you know, sometimes I would do camera work and, and stage hand work for that program as well. Mm. Um, Arlene, we're going to get to you in one minute. Um, you had mentioned cl clinical depression. So according to um, the definition for clinical depression, so people who don't know, uh, which is known as major depression, uh, a mental health disorder characterized by persistently depressed moods or a loss of interest or, a, or activities causing significant impairment in daily life. Possible causes include a combination of biological, psychological, social sources or of distress. Increasingly, research suggests these factors may <clears throat> cause changes in brain functioning, including altered activity in certain uh, neutral circuits of the brain. The, the last sentence I'm going to read, the persistence feeling of sadness and interest 
uh, it characterizes a major depression that leads to a range of behavioral or physical symptoms. These may include changes in sleep, appetite, energy level, concentration, behavior, or self-esteem. Depression is also associated with thoughts of suicide. Now, um, I'm going to put up a uh, mental health suicide number at the end of the show um, so we can do that. Uh, the, the mainstay and treatment of, um, of medication, uh, talk therapy, as well as a combination of, um, of the two, and research suggests that treatments, uh, <clears throat> that treatments may normalize brain uh, changes associated with depression. Okay, so that's what that is. Arlene, did you uh, want to ask any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, yes. I wonder if I'm, how, <coughs> how the... Uh, <coughs> Take your time. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Has he ever... Um, has he ever put down his experience as a single person in an article? Okay. Question that my wife wanted to ask you. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to rephrase it. Okay. Have you ever talked about depression, your depression, in any articles you have written for the Harlem Times or anything you have written journalistically? And uh, what advice have you given people if you did that? Well, I haven't um, talked about it in um, um, deep. I haven't talked about it at all in my journalism writing. You know, it would be a good idea to do so. I think so. Yeah. Um, now, you uh, had mentioned also that you're a part of Bridge House. Yeah. So you want to explain a little bit about that? Uh, Bridge House is an organization, a clubhouse, mm -hmm. which is part of Clubhouse International, which run, which work, work, they don't run, but Clubhouse International oversees 300 clubhouses around the world. Bridge House is one of them. And uh, these clubhouses are organizations that help people with um, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, you like Bridge House, you know, there's, it's divided into three different units that people with mental health issues can work in. So, so far we have, uh, we have a membership services unit, which, um, people with can, um, talk, um, um, review the membership and stuff like that over there in membership services. They have a culinary arts unit where people work in, you know, to cook food for the people who come in. And, um, you know, they serve lunch and they serve breakfast sometimes. And there's the unit that I work in, which is the business business unit, which, um, you know, we handle the newsletter. Um, we handle advocacy, obviously. Um, you know, there are a whole bunch of people that go up to Hartford to speak with politicians to make sure that we're not left out of any legislation that would help, that would be, that would potentially help us. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, for more information on Bridge House and uh, their mental health program, you can contact www.bridgehousect.org. It's in Connecticut, correct? Yes, Bridgeport, yeah. Connecticut. Yeah, well, I, I'll mention that again at the end of the show. Um, okay, so let's go into, um, and then Arlene can ask another question. Let's go into um, the situation of the fact that you had a stroke. Um, yes. So go ahead. Well, um, well I was actually uh, sitting at home one day um, watching TV, and then I, I just, you know, I, I heard a, like a high-pitched sound and I just started vomiting, you know, um, you know, I had weakness on my right side. Mm -hmm. At first, I didn't think it was a big deal, but over the days, uh, I, re I realized that I may have had a stroke. Mm -hmm. May have had a stroke. Um, unfortunately, it took about three days to, for me to go to the hospital, all right, because I thought it would go away on it. The, the, the vomiting did go away on its own. The, the right side weakness 
went away and his dog, but I had two of speech. Okay. So what exactly was wrong with your speech? Well, um, my speech was my, my speech was slurred. Um, I don't I didn't sound as well as I do now. You know, mm -hmm. which I took speech therapy. I took months of speech therapy to get back to um, where I am right now. Um, but um, I was hard to understand, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, um, it it it. I I thought that would have went away on its own too, but it didn't. Okay, okay. so um, yeah, if you are having a stroke. Um, there, there are, according to the website, www.healthprep.com, um, these are the seven signs of a stroke. A stroke occurs when blood to the brain is blocked. Blood brings oxygen and nutrients uh, to the cells. When blood, when blood, when blood brain cells die, this means <clears throat> that a section of the brain starts to break down and brain function is, uh, is altered. A quicker stroke is addressed. Uh, the less brain damage will be, and uh, the quicker a stroke is addressed, and the less brain damage will be, and it's better for recovery. Strokes are usually painless. There are seven signs of a stroke. So... Uh, we can go into that here, um, seven signs, hold on a second, okay, there we go, um, seven signs of, of a stroke are, wait, um, do you know some of the signs of a stroke, William, while I get this? Well, um, like I said, I have right side weakness. All mm -hmm. right. Yep. I had slurred speech. Mm -hmm. All right. And it was Vomiting. due to your, it was due to your, it was due to your sleep apnea, correct? Yeah, it was. It was determined after I had the stroke that I had sleep apnea. All right. Okay. And, um, so what causes I, what causes uh, the sleep apnea? Well, one of the causes is um, being overweight. Mm -hmm. All right. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Um, doctors did say that I'm a bit overweight, you know, for my height, mm -hmm. and um, I think my body mass index is pretty high as well. So, you mm -hmm. know, that could be a factor as well. Yeah. So if you if you have um the following, if you have any of these signs, if you have numbness, weakness in the face, arms or legs, confusion, trouble speaking or understanding speech. Trouble seeing in both eyes, trouble walking, dizziness, or problems in balance. Call nine one one immediately. Yes. Um, yes. So that according Don't do to what me, I did. Yeah. Do not do with Mr. William Jack. Do not wait a prolonged period of time. Don't wait three days. Don't wait a week. Don't wait a month. Get to the hospital immediately. Um, yes. You know, it, it's never good to wait so long. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, according to the CDC, these are the signs of, of a real stroke, uh, and you had a real stroke. Uh, sudden numbness and weakness in the face or arms, sudden confusion, trouble speaking, or difficulty understanding speech, sudden seeing in, in both eyes, or one or both eyes, uh, trouble walking, and severe headache uh, with no known cause. Call 911 right away, um, and if you want to find out more information about a stroke, you can go to the CDC's website. There's a video here that um, that they have. We might put in. Uh, yeah. So if um, if you have problems with your face and you and your skin droops, if your arms are numb, so on and so forth. Um, William, while we have some time, yes. Uh, uh, Arlene, did you want to ask questions? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, how has it affected you having a stroke as a as a person with such 
Go ahead. Say that again. Okay. Being effective, the work that you do, how has that affected you uh, with school and everything and and your eating habits? Uh, go ahead. Well, um, well, um, well, um, I, I, well, obviously my eating habits are pretty poor. So, you know, I have my, I have family tell me about that, that I need to exercise more and, uh, you know, go out for walks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but, you know, um, I, I, I haven't had to take time off from school. Mm -hmm. because uh because I had to stroke the stroke actually happened while I was on a medical leave of absence from the school already mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right um it actually happened a week after my birthday so you know mm -hmm. uh, so um you know I didn't have to worry about doing schoolwork at that time because because like I said I was on a medical leave of absence from the school mm -hmm. due to mental issues that I was having. Okay. Now, um, go ahead. Did you want to ask any more questions, Arlene? Yes. Um, um, Check your time. I wanted to say that. Um, Check your time. How long did it take you to recover from the stroke? Yeah. How long did it take you to recover from the stroke, and are you still recovering? Well, well, I well, this like I said, the 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 vomiting went away, and the and the weakness of the right side went away the next day. Mm -hmm. But it did take a few months for my speech to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. What are your future goals as a journalist, and also um, knowing the fact that you're graduating with your second master's? Well, well, uh, I'm trying to get um. Well, when I graduate from Bay Path, hopefully it'll be by 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I plan to get into the journalism field um full tilt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um recently I applied for two positions mm -hmm. um for digital reporter and content producer mm -hmm. at two different TV stations. Okay. okay. Uh, you don't All have right. to mention. You don't have to mention that. Um, uh, you know, we hope that you are doing well. Um, promise us one thing: that when you do get a job and go full scale in journalism, uh, take um, one of the things that the CDC does recommend during uh, strokes and heart attacks is that people take rest. People rest and they eat well and they try to eat well. Again, uh, for more information on uh, stroke prevention, you can go to www.cdc.gov forward slash stroke signs and symptoms. If you are having a stroke um, um, and knowing that you're having a stroke, uh, please take the following precautions. Um, Ask the person to smile uh, and to see if their face droops. Uh, ask the person to raise their arms, and uh, if the arms are drooping downward, uh, they're having a stroke. If their speech um, keeps repeating and their speech is slurred or strange, um, if you see these signs, call 911 right away. Again, for more information on on strokes or uh, heart attacks as well, you can contact the uh, www.cdc.gov um, uh, forward slash signs and symptoms of a stroke. Or the uh, National Stroke Association. The, yeah, or call the National Stroke Association. Is, you have the number there? I gave it to you. Hold on, um, hold on, let me... The, we, okay, hold on. Let me get that. The National <clears throat> Stroke Association number. Hold on. National <clears throat> Stroke 
association number. Okay, there we go. Um, National Stroke Association number is 1-800-787-6537. That number, once again, for the National Stroke Association is 1-800-787-6537. And for more information on Bridge House and their work, uh, with, uh, and uh, William Jackson is uh, doing... Um, Clubhouse Advocacy, uh, you can go uh, to www.bridgehousect.org. That is www.bridgehousect.org. And for more information on uh, suicide prevention here in Vermont, or any uh, mental health prevention, uh, if you need mental health counseling or anything within mental health, you can go to Washington County Mental Health website at www.wcmhs.org. That website, once again, is wcmhs.org, which is Washington County Mental Health. And also, again, last time, uh, the National Stroke Association number is 1-800-787-6537. That's 1-800-787-6537. William, thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Able Dinner. Um, anything else you would like to add? Uh, let's see. Uh, I can't think of anything right now, but I want to thank you for having me on the show. Okay. Thank you so much, and we will be um, we will be in contact. Um, this puts an end to this edition of April Dinner Near. Thank you to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the uh, partnership with the Association of the Blind Vermont, the Division for the Blind uh, Vermont, as as well as Habitat for Humanity and many, many, many others. I'm Lauren Seiler. Please take care of yourself when having a stroke uh, or a heart attack. Um, time is of the essence. Do not wait um, for the last minute. It could be uh, detrimental to your health. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Remember, the National Stroke Association, 1-800-787-6537. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able and On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is 
part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.